This is Indiana Weekend, some of the most interesting people and places from around our region. These are the stories you won't always see on the regular news, voices you won't always hear elsewhere. I'm John Strauss. This is a kind of news magazine show with stories just a bit off the beaten path. Today, the White River, a place of recreation and preservation. People don't know what White River and what they're missing until they get out here. This is the best kept secret that this county has. Guys that are executive chefs for big name people that this is what they come to do and he just says it's, this is just his stress relief. In the closing weeks of the season, you tend to grab for every last scrap of summer you can get. Recently, a fellow on Facebook put together an inner tubing trip on White River and 500 people signed up. We don't know exactly how many folks showed up at the starting point near Yorktown, but it was a lot. White River may be one of the state's least recognized recreational resources. We talked with Robbie Mikesell, owner of Canoe Country in Daleville recently, on a beautiful day with long shadows under the trees. He talked about the reaction people have when they get out on the water. They really enjoy this river because of how scenic it is and how peaceful and how secluded that the river is. I mean, there's not a lot of development along the water, so you don't get a lot of traffic, in, which, which is nice because you don't, you don't hear the people, you don't hear the traffic, you don't hear that city noise. You're able to get out and enjoy nature. If the river is a place of peace and beauty now, well, it wasn't always that way. John Craddock is Director Emeritus of the Muncie Bureau of Water Quality. In fact, he started the city's Water Pollution Control Agency in 1972 after working on pollution issues while a student at Ball State. He remembers what the river was like in the late 1960s and early 70s and showed us photos he's taken over the years. This is when it was red and green, orange, blue, every color, the rainbow that one could think of. Uh, uh, except you don't want it that color. Uh, this was also the same period of time that across the United States, it wasn't just Muncie, Indiana. It wasn't just the White River. This is during the same period of time that like the Cuyahoga River uh, in Ohio was burning and catching fire. Uh, don't forget that EPA came into existence in 1970. The reason that it came into existence was because we as a society had not done environmentally what we should be doing. So our White River was pretty typical as the rivers across the United States. It was highly polluted, it was full of industrial waste, raw sewage, it was weedy, it was overgrown, it smelled, there were tires, refrigerators, bicycles. Uh, we drove over it and went to work as a society. We ignored it, we turned our backs on it, and uh, it was not used recreationally uh, uh, for hardly anything. White River was hardly alone. A lot of the damage here and elsewhere occurred before people thought much about protecting the environment. The first Earth Day observance wasn't until 1970, and the Environmental Protection Agency was started later that year. Early on, the effects of chrome, cadmium, pesticides, and other chemicals in the water were not well understood. Some of them we couldn't even hardly test for and detect, let alone have any long-term studies knowing about anything from birth defects to potential cancer-producing uh, agents. These were studies that came along later. So a lot of the disposal methods that were taking place in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s in particular, I believe were done out of, out of ignorance. That doesn't make it right, but for the most part, my feeling is, is that, that that was pretty much it. We didn't realize that if we, if we dumped this on the ground behind our particular facility, uh, that it could end up in our groundwater system. He could see something was wrong, even without sophisticated tests. I think the first time I saw it uh, extremely green, extremely orange, and then the first major oil spill that we had and also fish kills, our first major fish kill that we had. Uh, the first, uh, from about 1970 to 1985, we had 10 fish kills in Muncie. The last one was around 65,000 fish. As bad as it looked, there was still pushback against protecting the rivers. 
but in Muncie, the emphasis was on cooperation. Craddock had just started what became the Muncie Bureau of Water Quality. We could levy a thousand dollar a day fine, administrative fine, from my desk for each parameter that was out of limits. So if an industry in town was over for chrome, copper, and zinc, that's a $3,000 a day fine or a $90,000 a month fine. Our philosophy was to go in the door, work with the industry, have the equipment put in that's called pretreatment equipment to treat that toxic waste on site. The money sitting in the bank does not clean up the problem. If you're in the middle of a court case, the discharge is still going while the court case is going. So we took a little different attitude. We want the clean water without loss of jobs. In 31 years, I only had to issue one $1,000 fine. So it did work. Yet the industrial community invested over $20 million. It took time to see results because the river was so polluted. We realized that it was so heavily polluted that it was like peeling back layers of an onion, if you will. And we had to get so many layers peeled back before we would actually see the change. And I remember one year, all of a sudden, and I, I, it must have been late 70s in there somewhere, uh, to where all of a sudden we sar started to see the increase in aquatic insects. We found our first freshwater mussels that weren't there when we came and hadn't been there maybe for 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, we started to see a change in the aquatic insects to where we would only find tubiflex worms and those uh, organisms that are found in highly polluted water. We started to find stoneflies, mayflies, caddisflies that are clean water species. To where now you're up to the point to where we went from 30 species of fish to up to 65 species of fish now, more than doubled them. The bottom two feet of the river when we started was sewage, sludge, and industrial muck. When you stepped in it with your waders, there was a and a black ooze would come out. Now it's sand, gravel, or bedrock. Here's how it looks today, a river that's an attraction for fishing and recreation. I had people that came from northern Indiana that went on the Mongo River. Um, they go up there all the time. They're from Fort Wayne area. Uh, they came down here a couple weeks ago because they were closed due to flooding. Um, these ladies said, your river is just so much nicer, it's so much cleaner, um, a lot more trees and secluded and just a lot more rapids and a lot more twisting and turning to make it more more fun and more adventurous than just, you know, paddling on a flat water or something that's more of a still running water. Even when the water's down and the current is slow, there's still something about the river that draws people here. It's just such a calming effect. I mean, just to be out on the water, to be out in nature, it's just stress and everyday worries, just, they just melt away. We have a bald eagle living along the section of the river um, and people see it usually on a daily basis, if not sometimes different, but you know, it flies up and down this section of the river all the time that where people see it. And this is the first time that I can ever remember um, seeing a bald eagle and it hangs around here quite frequently and we see it quite a lot. More needs to be done, especially controlling CSOs, the combination sewer overflows that routinely dump raw sewage into White River. Plans call for spending more than $100 million on that effort in the Muncie area. Craddock says it may take another 20 years to really clean the river. Right now, I don't know, on a grading scale in 1970, I would have given the White River an F or an F minus if there's such a possibility. I would give the White River in Muncie right now, most times, a B. To get up to an A or an A plus, like many things in life, that first 40 years versus the next 20, the next 20 is probably going to cost as much or more than the last 40. To finish the cleanup, what Craddock calls the last five percentage points of cleanliness will be expensive. Then the question becomes, are we willing to pay for that? How much, we'll have to decide, 
is a really clean river worth. That's our show for today. Thanks for being part of it with us. Hope you'll join us next time as we find more stories off the beaten path from across the state on Indiana Weekend.